Hi, my name is Sarah, and in this video I shall be talking about placental abruption. Placental abruption is when part or all of the placenta separates from the lining of the uterus before delivery of the fetus. When this happens, a considerable amount of bleeding occurs behind the placenta. Placental abruption occurs in 1% of all pregnancies. This may either be confined to the pocket behind the placenta, referred to as a concealed bleed, as we can see over here. Or else, some of the blood may track down between the membranes and the uterus and present as vaginal bleeding, and this is referred to as a revealed placental abruption. The concealed form is, however, much more common. If the bleed causes a large pressure within the uterus, sometimes the blood can extend into the myometrium, and this is referred to as a cuvelaire uterus. The uterus will appear purple and bruised, as we can see in this image. In some cases, the blood may also enter the lycor, and patients will present with blood-stained lycor. Okay, so a patient with a placental abruption may present with vaginal bleeding, referred to as antipartum hemorrhage. The blood is typically dark in color. Now, the amount of bleeding does not reflect the severity of the abruption. In some cases, not all of the blood may have trickled down, and as we said before in other cases, there may be absolutely no bleeding, which we said is a concealed placental abruption. They may also present with abdo pain and uterine tenderness. Therefore, these patients present with painful bleeding. This is an important feature which you need to remember when distinguishing between different causes of APH, antipartum hemorrhage. The abdo pain may also be secondary to contractions, as usually labor starts. In severe cases, the uterus may be woody hard. They can also present with fetal distress, as the placenta is the source of oxygen and nutrients to the fetus, if the placenta has completely separated from the uterine wall, we no longer have oxygen and nutrients being delivered to the fetus, therefore resulting in fetal hypoxia and fetal distress. So next, the complications. Fetal death occurs in 30% of confirmed placental abruptions. Placental abruption may also result in DIC and renal failure and rarely in maternal death. Quite a scary picture, so this condition is taken very seriously. Now, there are some risk factors associated with placental abruption. These are a previous placental abruption, intrauterine growth restriction, preeclampsia, chronic hypertension, maternal smoking, blunt trauma, cocaine use, and multiple pregnancy. Okay, good. So moving on to the assessment of these patients. So we start off by taking some bloods. We take a CBC to check the hemoglobin level. We take a renal profile because if there is severe hemorrhage, as we said, they can have renal failure. We take a coagulation screen to assess for any bleeding problems such as DIC. We take a cross match and blood group so that we will have blood available if necessary and check the patient's blood group to check if she's rhesus negative. And lastly, we take a Clay Howard test. So what is the Clay Howard test? So essentially this detects the amount of fetal red blood cells in the maternal circulation. Okay, but why would we need to know this? So we have a few images over here which are going to explain. So let's say we have a rhesus negative woman and a rhesus positive man who conceive a child. The rhesus negative woman will have a rhesus positive fetus within her womb. During a sensitizing event, cells from the rhesus positive fetus will enter the woman's bloodstream. So over here we have a mixing of blood between the fetus and the mother. A placental abruption is one such sensitizing event. So next the woman becomes sensitized and antibodies form to fight the rhesus positive blood cells. This does not affect this particular pregnancy, but in the next pregnancy with a rhesus positive fetus, maternal antibodies will attack fetal red blood cells. So in order to prevent this from happening, in rhesus negative mothers we perform a Clayhauer test to quantify the amount of mixing of blood, and then we give anti-D, 
which mops up any antibodies produced by the mother. Good. So back to our assessment. So next we perform an ultrasound to check the growth of the fetus and look for any other causes of APH, such as placenta previa. A placental abruption is not always visible on ultrasound. Then, most importantly, we need to check for fetal distress. So we perform a CTG. If you're interested in learning more about CTGs, comment below and I'll create a video about them. Okay, so the management of these cases essentially depends on the situation and the assessment of the fetal and maternal condition. There is nothing we can do to remove the abruption. We need to assess how severe things are to decide whether to deliver the baby or not. Therefore, if there are signs of fetal distress or maternal deterioration, an urgent delivery is necessary by C-section. If there is no fetal distress, but the gestation is at term, so 37 weeks or more, an induction of labor is performed and the mother is allowed to deliver vaginally. If there is no fetal distress, but the pregnancy is preterm, so less than 34 weeks, we can afford to monitor the patient on the ward, giving her dexamethasone just in case things change and we need to deliver. Dexamethasone is given to improve the fetal lung condition. It is given in two doses of 12 mg 12 hours apart as an intramuscular injection. Okay, great. So that wraps up everything you need to know about placental abruption. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.